Okay. Right. Is everyone, how's everyone doing? Everyone ready for this? Yes. Good. Okay. I'm going to start. I'm going to start. Okay. Are we all good? Yes. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Yes. Right. So we're going to make this peony. Um, I have some that were made long ago, but they're a bit dusty, but I just want to show you. So we're going to do two different things. We're going to make this open one, which is oh, a little... Wow. You can see a chamber. It's got drops and it's got broken. But anyway, I just want to show you the inside of it so that you can see. We're going to make this inside, and I probably won't make that many petals right now because um, it's quite time-consuming. They're all the same. So I'll just show you how to make them. Um, so that's the open one. And then the closed one, which I think is the more like well-known one. This guy isn't actually even finished. Um, looks like that. So we'll also yeah. make that one. Again, you might not, we might not make this many petals right now. Um, but as long as you know how to do it, it's just a question of adding more and more petals until it's as full as you want it. Okay. Um, and they are a time consuming to make. So if you're making it at home, give yourself time to make all those petals. Okay. Right. Okay. So for those of you that have not done any classes with me before or um, the Vashni, this is for you. <laughs> okay. So we make the flowers. I like this brand, okay, of gum paste. It's great for the flowers. But you can use um, other brands if you want. I just, I personally like this one a lot, okay. And it's not the same as fondant, and it's not the same as fondant with CMC added to it. Did we lose someone again? Because, um, Fondant with CMC or just plain fondant is very brittle. Whereas this, it gets got this, I don't know how to describe it, like a chewing gummy texture. And when it's dry, sorry, I'm just probably how they get broken. You can, I don't know if you can hear that, you can like bash it quite hard, which is fondant would never do. Fondant is much more brittle, it should break. Okay. So that, as I say, this PME one is the one I like, but you can, there are other brands. Um, and when you're working with it, it's nice to sure. have some, where do I put it now? Oh, there it is, it's in the wrong container. Something like a, okay, this one is um, petal base, but pulse, any kind of white margarine. It's just a sort of fat that we're gonna use to stop it from sticking to things. So I'm going to grease up my board, you know, my hands, etc. And just work a little bit in there when I need it so that it's ready to be worked with. Okay. Um, it also dries very hard. So just if you're not this bits that you're not using, keep them in your container. I'm going to start off with this, um, this, the middle of the, of the other one so it can dry a little bit while I am making all these petals. Um, so it has, just let's get that back here for a second. Okay. So it has these three, I don't know what they really are, like little pokey pointy things that live in here and then all these stamens. And I realized uh, when I was getting ready this morning that I didn't actually add stamens to a list of things that you need. It's just to show you what they are. Okay. So they look, they come in little bundles like this. I'm hoping for some yellow ones. Maybe these ones are quite small. Um, these are not edible. And quite a lot of the things that we're going to do today are going to be on wires, which are also obviously not edible. Um, so I don't know if anyone eats these flowers. <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> but who yeah. knows? <laughs> okay, so the wires. Um, I'm going to use different... Is it in the picture? There we go. Different types of wires. These ones are already covered with tape, the green ones and the white ones. Um, this thin one here is a 26 gauge, 26 gauge. Um, so those I'm going to use for the petals. Um, to hold that big fat flower, you need a much thicker wire. So for that, I'm going to use an 18 gauge. That's what it looks like. You can see somebody's got a lot of background noise is that maybe you guys want to mute it you mute yourselves maybe just unmute yourselves if you've got a question okay so that's the big fat one 
that's going to hold this big um, big flower. Um, you could also make it on a toothpick. For right now, I'm just looking for three to hold these three little green things. Okay. So again, nice thin ones. So, let's see. Um, just move those guys out of the way. So if you look here, back at this guy again, you can see each petal is on its own wire there. And you can bend the wires to make the shape. And then you join all these wires together. But if your wires are too fat at this stage, you can see here's a petal that fell off. <laughs> if it's too fat at this stage, then you're going to end up with a lot of, like a really big fat bundle of wires, which will be difficult to work with, which is why we want the thinnest ones we can find for this stage. Okay. All right. So I would say take a sort of small pea size, um, something like that, and then just shape it into kind of a little cone. That's all really it is. Um, you can see I've got get it in the thing and a bit of cracking there if you have cracks like that just work it a little bit and then roll it again um, and you can make a hook in the end of this so we don't want it to fall off um, the end so you can put a little hook in it but uh, Jake reminded me the other day what a good idea it is to just burn it on okay so I'm going to show you I thought it was a really good idea um, if I can get the lighter to work oh la la okay so just light up, I mean, warm up your end of your wire until it's red hot and then stick it onto your green thing. Okay, it should, um, it should be that it's then like burnt on there. You can see it's, it's a little bit loose still, it's still soft, but it's basically stuck on there. And you're gonna need three of those. I've also seen people dip their wires in glue. You know, you don't have to do this burning thing, but as I say, Jess was doing one of her things the other day and I thought, what a great idea for this, especially. Um, okay. So there I've got two more. I'm gonna just do two for the price of one here. Who doesn't like a little bit of fire on their Saturday morning, you know? Okay. Okay. And then I've got a, a piece of polystyrene here, specifically for putting my flowers into. Okay. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Sorry, there's a letter. But it's very helpful because you can stick the wires in and your things, you know, can be stored there out of the way. Right, and I'm going to do the same and thing. Okay, so whenever you're joining these wires together, you're going to use florist tape. It looks like that. You can buy it from the baking shop or the florist. And it's not, it's not really sticky as such, but when you pull on it, it becomes a little bit sticky. And it's quite wide. So with those, especially with those really small wires, you want to cut it into at least, what did I try something else the other day? Let's see if I can do that again. Fold it. I'm going to just cut it into half or thirds or something. There we go. Just so it's a bit narrower. Let's just do halves. <laughs> I'm having that kind of morning. It's just a half morning. Okay, so it's a bit narrower. And then you're going to take some of these stamens. So the stamens are basically cotton, cotton uh, thread. And then I don't actually know what's on the end here. It used to be royal icing blobs. I don't know what they make it out of now. I have a feeling it's probably not even edible at all. And you'll see they come, they've got little bubbles on either side. So I'm just going to fold them in half, but you could cut them. It doesn't really matter. Or sometimes if you've got half ones left over from something else, you can use those. And you need a few just to go in this whole bundle. Okay. That's probably enough. Okay. So there they are. And now I'm going to join them all together. So I've got my three little green things. Um, I'm just using a pair of pliers, but you could just use your fingers. 
And I just want to turn them out a little bit so that I can get the wires to come together nice and easily. And I would say if you have the time, just um, leave them to dry fully. And we're doing it like this because we want to kind of get on with it. Um, but if they're completely dry, you're not going to run the risk of accidentally squashing it while you're joining the wires on and everything. Okay, so I'm just going to start with one. So let me just show you how you get the tape on. So sorry about my fingers. It's food coloring. It's not dirt, I promise. <laughs> I had a bit of a run in with some Halloween yesterday. Okay, so I'm just twisting it around. You can see it's on there. It's quite firmly on there. And then I'm going to join some of these stamens on. I'm just going to join. <laughs> what is happening here? I'm just going to join some onto each wire and then join the three wires together just to make my life a little bit easier. Okay, so there they are. Can you see them? Just get them taped on. Sorry, there goes the train. Uh oh, he wasn't stuck on very well. Okay. So you can see there they are taped on green thing and a few of these. Obviously they look like a rocket ship taking off here. So just sort of tease them out so they're going all, they look more natural. Okay. And one of the things I love about these peonies, actually there's two reasons that I love them. Um, the first one is that they are big. They're big, big flowers. So you can have a cake with one flower. So yeah, it's a bit time consuming to make that one flower, but um, yeah. but uh, you don't, you just need one flower really. You know, they're so like sculptural that you don't have to make hundreds of little flowers. Um, and the other reason is that the peonies have a very, the real life ones have a very short season. I think in South Africa, they come now around November um, and they're only in season for a few months or a few weeks even. So if people want to have this look on their cake, they're not going to find it with fresh ones unless they're getting married in those few weeks. So, you know, it gives you that option. Um, and they're very pretty, actually. Right, okay, there's my green one, last one. Oopsie, let me get the tape on. Okay. And taping these wires, they're a bit of a fiddle, but with any wired flower, you will need to learn to tape. So you might as well just embrace it. Oopsie, I'm not embracing anything here. I don't know if you can see this, this green guy, he's quite loose on here. He didn't burn on well enough. Um, oh, la, la. and now I can't get my tape on. Let's turn that around. Jade, are you making along with us? Yeah, you don't have to talk yes, to me. I am. I think you're the only one joining in today. Oh, no. I mean, doing it with us. I think everyone else is just watching us do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. I have three. Do you have three? Jane, are you sort of on track there? Yes. Okay, awesome. So there they are. And now I'm going to join these two together. And I want these stamens to be. Huh, on the outside, I've teased them all in the wrong way. Again, I would just join them. You can you can move them the wires around once you've got them all joined together. Okay. I'm running out of tape here. Where's my tape? I have more tape. Where did I put it? And the finishing touch for this middle is to dust these green things with a bit of colour, but I think we'll come back and do it once they're a bit drier. Mm. Um, it's easier to dust once they're dry. Okay, so it looks like a bit of a dog's breakfast there. I don't know if you can see it. We want these stems to be outside. So I'm just going to use my pliers to shape it, get them to go where I want, etc. Where's that guy? Oh, yeah, he's got quite a bit longer. 
my much bigger stamens that day and this is coming unraveled. Just a bit like me really. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be as dark as it sounded. There we go. So you can see I've taped up to about this point. Um, you could tape all the way down, I just ran out of tape. Um, so if you find that they're a bit low down, like this guy here, you can just pull them out. I mean, they are a little bit loose in that tape, which probably not really what you want, but um, get in there. What's happening here? Something like that. Okay. Um, this green was also a little bit like, like mint green. I don't know. I don't actually know what it was. I tried to lighten it up by adding some other color to it, but it didn't really seem to have worked. I would have gone maybe more with a kind of a really subtle avocado green. I'm going to dust it a bit, so I'm not too worried. It just looks a little bit unnatural, this color. Anyway, okay, so there's your middle. Uh-oh, and I'm about to lose a piece of it. Just get on there. What is wrong with you? All right, and if I had all the time in the world, I would leave that to dry completely before I do anything else. Um, I will attempt to attach some of our petals today. I might have to make a little video for you guys of how I do that, because much easier when they're fully dry. Okay, let's move on to the middle of the big one, the big closed one. For this, I'm going to use some pink paste. I have made some pink. Again, I'm not sure if it's enough because it uses so much color, I mean so much paste. Um, you want to mix lots of the color that you're going to use. And these peonies are ordinarily pink or maybe like a pale purple. I think they come in a white. This is a piece of gray that I just had left over from something else. I'm going to use that to make the inside because it's just a leftover. Maybe I actually don't need it for anything. Maybe I do. Let's just use white. I think I'll use up my leftovers, but I actually think I might need gray for something else. Okay, so I'm going to just make it's kind of a large golf ball size. If you find that it's just too heavy, you can use a polystyrene ball. If you go to like a craft shop, you find these polystyrene balls. Sorry about that, it was the same size, like a golf ball size. I just didn't happen to have any and I didn't want to go to the craft shop just for one ball. So I'm just gonna make it out of bondant, out of paste, but the polystyrene ball makes it much lighter. Um, but for the purposes of making the flower, it doesn't matter what's inside. Obviously the polystyrene ball is not edible. Okay, so now you've got options. You can either use a thick wire, if it's going to be part of an arrangement, like um, something that has to drape down the side of the cake. You need to have it on a wire so that you can bend the wire so it goes where you want it to. If it's just gonna be on top of the cake or stuck on the cake, you can just use a toothpick. I think I'm just going to use the toothpick for today. I don't know. So, or actually, no, I'm not, because I want to show you how to make the loop. Okay. So, something like that, like a big lollipop. If you're using your wire, just um, either burn it on or do both of these things. Make a hook in it like this. Okay. So, just a little hook so that when you stick it in, it holds, it sticks well into the middle of it. Um, I'm going to heat him, I think. To because it's so big and if I again if I had time I would um, I would make this ball and I would leave it to dry like fully before I did anything more but because we're doing this in a class oh okay here we go that was very dramatic if you saw that there was smoke okay there it is my big lollipop middle so I would leave this to dry, I'd make it a day before and leave it to dry, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just saying it if you have the time. Okay. The other thing with the, the peony is that usually the color is darker on the inside petals. And as the petals open out, they become paler and paler and paler. 
So I've got this piece of pink. It's, I don't know if you can see it on the screen to me, it looks almost white, it's so pale. So I'm just gonna darken it up a bit and show you. And then as we work, I will add more white to it if we need more, which will make the color become paler and paler, if that makes any sense. So in terms of colors, I have, you need to use these gel colors. It doesn't matter what brand you've got. I've got all kinds of brands here. Um, they all do the same thing. They really, for me, are very interchangeable. Just use whatever you can get from your local shop. And if you want a pale pink color, have this lid open. <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, maybe what you want to do is just take your toothpick and just dot a little bit of the color on like that so that you don't end up with a huge black like, Barbie pink scenario. Um, I'm just trying to darken it a bit, so I'm gonna be quite generous. And the pinks, no matter what pink you buy, I find all come out quite Barbie. They're quite bright. So I'm also gonna add in a little bit of ivory, this guy, just to tone it down a bit so it's not quite so like, yeah, Barbie party. So I don't know if you can see, it's just a tiny, few drops of the ivory. You don't want to add too much ivory. You don't want it to be like a brown color, unless you're trying to go for like a dusty rose, I suppose, then maybe you do want lots of ivory. And I'm just mixing it in. So you just work it in like this. Again, you can knead in some wholesome while you add it, especially if it's sticky, just put some on your hands. I don't know if you can see it sticking a bit to my fingers. So the wholesome will stop it from sticking. Okay, and then just look at your color, especially if you've mixed colors, you might want to mix lots of colors. You don't run out halfway through because it's difficult to match a color. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. It's pink. Um, I'm sorry, now there's, I don't know if you can hear, now there's a goose <laughs> having a meltdown outside. Okay, so see we have, okay. What are we doing? Right, there we go. I'm just gonna start with a small piece. I'm going to start with this big one, I think, so that we can see how to make the petals, and then I'll move on to making the wired petals for the open one. Okay. Right. So just make sure your color is nicely mixed in. Okay. So I have, where have I put them? I have a set, a metal, oh, it's right here, a metal cutter set that I had made from a company called Treat Boutique. They're great. They make um, cookie cutters and they're in the towel somewhere and they really are great and they'll make anything. So this is the set they made for me. But the set that I would choose if I had to choose a new set, and I actually did have one, but then I lent it to someone and I don't know where it is, is a set made by a company called P&E. Um, this is a sunflower, but the... the um, the only set looks a bit like this, and inside it has, as part of the set, the veiner, okay? So because this is just a metal set, it doesn't have the veiner involved. So I've got this veiner, which came with a different set, uh, which is why if I said to anyone, buy the set, buy that set with the veiner in it, that you just plunge it down, it's so much easier to use. Um, I don't know, so I don't have that set. I tried to get one, but they didn't have stock. So if you're buying one, that's the one I would buy where those veiners are. The, horses are. the veiners were part of, um, let me just show you what they look like. So they, you get different veiners for different things. So like this one, I think is for a rose, but it is useful. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that guy out as well. Actually, he's quite nice. Sorry, now oh, there we go. Let's just get rid of those guys. Okay. Okay, now this pink is quite Barbie. Never mind. It's a Barbie day. Um, all right. There we go. Rolling pin. So I'm just going to roll it out. You want this to be quite thin. Okay, so when I say quite thin, I mean thin enough that you can read through it. You can't actually read through that. It's sort of, I don't know, can you maybe, 
I can see through it. I can't read through it. It's quite thin. Okay. So if you can see that. And again, with fondant, you would never be able to roll it this thin. Only with the petal paste, the gum paste, would you be able to roll it this thin. Okay, so this set that I have um, has four sizes. The one with the plunger, I think maybe only has three. I'm not 100% sure. Do you have that one, Jess? What set do you have? No. Okay, um, I'll see if I can find a picture of it for you to show you. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you've got, just use what you've got. Um, I'm going to start with the smallest one here. And I'm going to cut six petals. Okay. So the number of petals in a flower usually <clears throat> has to do with how the flower looks at the end. So if you make a rose with four petals instead of five in the, in the row, you would end up with it looking, you know, slightly unnatural. So it's not the end of the world if you have the wrong number of petals. It just sometimes doesn't always look as realistic as it would if you had the correct number. So don't get too hung up on it, but... Um, and this thing has got so many stinking petals, you'll see you'll be cutting petals till you, you know, till the apocalypse, which might be sooner than later. Something. Right, okay. This thing is called a petal pad. Um, <laughs> bless them, my children took a rapsy bite out of it there. It did wash it. <sighs> Okay, if you have a new petal pad, you might want to just put a bit of um, mazina on it. So corn flour, this is uh, it's just a cleaning cloth that was clean. And inside here is the mazina. So if you're finding that things are sticking, you can also just use a bit of this just to puff onto it. <clears throat> oh, that was puffier than I expected. Okay. Um, and you're also going to need some kind of ball tool, bone tool. Let me show you your options here. Actually, that's also quite a nice tool. Again, just use what you've got. It doesn't, you know, these things are easily available. If you've got even the back of a paintbrush could probably work for this. Okay, so this guy is called a bulbous nose tool, I think. I actually went to look it up because I had it the other day. This guy you would use like this. Okay, side on. And um, this one is called a ball tool. It's just got a ball. You're going to press on the edges like that. Um, this one is called the bone tool. This is my personal favorite. I love this guy. I don't know. Same thing. You just press on the edge. I think it's all about what you're used to. I was taught to use this one, so that's the one I love. I'm going to keep him out. You know, if you just want to use the back of a paintbrush, same thing. You can just roll it over like that. Um, and then I'm going to vein them. So here's my little veiner. There it is. I'm just going to press it onto the pestle. Okay, so you can see that imprint. I don't know if you can actually see that in the video, but there's an imprint of the veins on there. And you're going to do that with all of them. And veining these petals, it is another extra step. Whoopsie, that one's a bit skew. Um, to making these things, but I think it's kind of a necessary step for this flower. They are quite a veiny flower. And then when you dust it with the colored dust at the end, the dust will kind of congregate slightly more in those veins and it will be even more realistic. Okay, so once you've got the veins on, you can pop it onto your petal pad and we're going to frill the edges slightly with the tool that you're using. There is, sorry, the reason I went a bit off track there, there is another tool that looks like this. I think it's called a friller veiner. I don't know if you can see it on the sides of it. I don't know if you can see this in the video. It's got like indentations. Let me just um, now vein all of those. Let me just make another one quickly. So it kind of does two things in one go for you. So let me just show you. Okay, so now this is just my spare one. So this one, you can roll it over and it puts the veins in and it frills the edge at the same time. Which, I don't know, it's not my favorite one. I don't like to use it that much, but it is also quite a useful tool if you don't have something with veins. If you just want to quickly get those veins on there, that's an option. Okay, but I'm getting sidetracked. Go away, spare one. 
Okay. I'm going to use my bone tool because that's what I like to use. But as I say, it doesn't really make any difference. The effect is the same in the long term. I'm just going to press onto those frilly little edges there just to make them stand up like that. So it's thinning them, making them even thinner, and it's giving them a bit of a shape. Okay. And you want to be pressing on, so this part needs to be half on the petal, half on the pad. You want to be pressing that absolute edge. If you go inside the edge, you'll also erase those veins that you've just put there. And you won't get this really thin edge. So you want to be pushing right down on that edge there. Okay. And this peony is a very frilly flower. It's got lots of ruffles and frills. So you can do this till you, you know, till you've got nothing else going on in your life. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to stick them onto that big ball that I had. Okay, so here's my big ball. Um, in terms of sticking, you could use water, but I would avoid water as it's a bit, just a bit wet. <laughs> I'm just talking about it. So I'm going to use this food glue, which is, this one is Barco. Again, you get lots of different varieties. You can make your own homemade one, um, which is basically just CMC, a little bit of sugar and some water um, or vinegar or vodka or something. Um, I don't know if you can, again, I'm not sure if you can see this, but it's, it's kind of thick, kind of a thick glue texture. And a small brush. I don't want to be too small. So this guy's going to work. Okay. So this is going to be the top here. If it's easier for you to see where the top is, you can just make a little indent for something so that you can know which side is top. And I'm just, I'm just going to glue this whole top here. Okay. And then you're going to start sticking them on. So when the flower is growing, these veins will be on the out, on the inside like this. Okay. But in this instance, because we veined it, if I just stick it on where it's supposed to be, you're going to get the side that has no veins. And what's the point of doing the veining then? So I'm going to turn them over so that the vein part is sticking out, okay? My little indent that I made, I just accentuated a bit, is there, okay? And we want to cover this whole ball with these petals, okay? So I've stuck one on and you can see it's sticking up nicely there. These little frills are, the, are going to come to like a little point almost in the middle. Okay. Then, I, And if you look at the petal, it is, um, it is not symmetrical. Can you see that? So this extra frilly side is the side that we want to be outside. Okay. So I'm going to paint a bit of glue there. And there he goes, you see. So the frill is still keeping out, all with me. Okay. And just keep pushing it closer to where that middle point is. It's like an apple. <laughs> okay. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing that so that you guys can see where the middle is. Okay, so frilly side, outside. And don't worry too much what's happening down here. All of this is gonna be covered with other petals in the long term. Right now, we just want to get this middle part to look as perfect as possible. Um, okay, a little bit more glue. Frilly side, outside. And obviously, you've got your six petals, so you need to try and space them nice and evenly. Okay, frilly side, outside. Then when we come to this last one, so I just need to lift this guy slightly so that I can put the last one underneath in there if that makes sense okay so you get this kind of overlapping thing can you all see that i don't know i'm trying to hold it up but it's a two so it's still in focus no, I'm just, okay. so you don't want to be able to see down into the middle there if you look from the side you can see these things are sticking up quite high so i'm just going to gradually close it up so that you can see no parts of that white in there at all okay there we go okay can you see that okay everyone with me still okay 
Then you can put them there to dry for a bit. Now we're going to move on to the next pickle size. So when, um, when they were cut at the factory, this guy, so they have like a, a doubled over edge so that when you cut out of the cookie cutter, it doesn't cut your hands. But I've turned these over now. So now I want to keep my frilly sides out and I'm going to vein the other side. So I'm going to cut this way around, actually. Actually, I'm going to do all of them that way around eventually. Okay. It's silly, but I should have done the first ones the other way. Doesn't really matter. Okay, you'll, you'll see once they're on, you're not going to know which side is the frilly side and which side isn't. It all looks quite frilly once it's done. Okay. So these petals are obviously getting bigger and bigger and bigger, so roll out a little bit more of your paste. So there's my pink. Because we want it to be fading to a slightly paler color, I'm going to add, so I've probably got about Two thirds pink, one third white. I'm going to mix those together so the color will become hopefully a bit lighter. And we are going to dust these with the colored dust at the end. So that means that your colors, you can change the colors a bit. You know, you can by dusting on darker color in the middle, you could do it. So even if you just made them out of white paste, you can still do them into white. Oh, so here. Now it's raining. So many background noises here, sorry. Um, okay, so there it is, slightly paler pink. Um, roll that out. Nice and thin. Okay. And I need six of these guys, okay. Oh, some cuts are nicely on this side. Should have done the other one, sorry. Okay, and make sure you get a nice clean cut. I don't know if you can see, I'm kind of doing this thing where I shake it, shake it, shake it to make sure it's cut through nicely. If you find that it's sticking, so like that one there, you can just grease up with your wholesome or whatever, just grease up your cutter, that does help a little bit. Some people also use Mazina, whatever, just something to stop it from sticking and making sure, that just make sure you get a nice clean cut. And again, I need to cut six. I just need one more. Yeah. There we go. Okay, and then just ruffle up all your bits like this and put it back into your bag so they're not wasted. And you're nice and cookie. All right, I'm going to line them up. So that I can do a kind of cookie cutter veining scenario. Just those veins in. This is a different vein, because it's not the same vein I used just now. And these are the kind of flowers, you know, I get myself set up, put on a the TV or a podcast or something, and you can just bang them out, you know, it's quite meditative. That's the thing in other people's hands. Okay, my little pads are a bit small for six. Here we go. Okay, again with your bone tool, same thing. Just ruffle those edges and ruffle, ruffle them. Uh, if there's anything that's bothering me just now. Okay, and uh, you don't need to do anything on this part, just, just on these um, edges here. And as I say, you can, you can go quite crazy with this ruffling. Because they are, they're frilly, they look like super frilly roses. If you find they're sticking on, I don't know if you can see that guy was a bit stuck there, just lift them up and just get some mazina underneath. Um, if they get stuck and you keep frilling, then you're going to end up squashing it over itself or making a, a rip. I'm not sure a rip would really matter in this case, as I say, they are quite frilly. Okay. There we go, all on there. Okay, here's my big lollipop ball again. So these ones, I'm gonna have them opening out so that the, the veins are in the correct place. Okay, so in this case. Um, I don't think it really matters where you start on the ball. I usually look from the top and just see who, who's got a bit of a gap. In this case, it's very clearly this spot, I don't know. 
don't think it really matters. As long as they're evenly spaced around, I don't think it matters where you start. I'm going to glue the petals in this case. So I'm just going to glue kind of the bottom third. I don't want a lot of glue. You don't want to make it into a big sticky mess. So just a, like a little splash of glue there to get on there. And then you can always add more glue if you're finding it's not sticking nicely. Or it's not sticking where you want it to. Okay, so same story. Stick it on. And if you look from the side, this is about level with that, I would say. You can peel it outwards if it's looking too high. I wouldn't go in here. I wouldn't go so close. Oh, maybe. Um, if you go too close, you end up having to make more and more and more pickles, which is obviously more time consuming. So I would give it a bit of space. You know, as long as you keep that ruffled look, I think you're fine. Okay. And then... I'm going around again, same way with the more roughly side or where the ruffles go a bit lower on top. And just look from the top so that you're getting a good spacing. Because remember, you've got to get your six around there somehow. And they're obviously slightly bigger size now. So just see where you are. And they're very forgiving. I don't know. So I usually just kind of get them on. Okay, I'll show you what I mean now. So get them stuck on. This guy here needs to be underneath that first one. So you end up with kind of a spiral vibe. Everyone with me? Okay. Oopsie, not on the screen. Here we go. And, oh, sorry, something stuck on my finger. And then you're going to look from the top and see, well, okay, where does it need to be? For me, it needs to all be in a bit more, like down, like that. Okay. But it's not sticking there by itself because I didn't have glue exactly there. So just go around, pop a little bit of extra glue where you need it to stick. And always remember that the glue, if you have glue and that something is not covering the glue, uh, will be a, like a shiny mark. So don't go crazy. Don't glue the whole petal. Okay, there we go. You can see it's starting to come together now. And then these guys, just peel them out so that you get the full effect of those ruffles and that you can see those veins that you put in there. Okay. And again, if I had all the time in the world, I, if I was doing this for an order, I would leave it to dry fully before carrying on. We are not doing that because we're here for a class. So I'm just going to carry on. But you'll see, as you work with it, it's much easier to add on to one that is dry and especially one which has a dry inside or the polystyrene ball because you can really squish it on there. I can't really do that because I'm going to misshape my ball. So, okay. Right, then I'm going to go to the third size. Again, if your set only has three, then you'll be at the biggest size now. My set has four, so I'm going to this next size. Um, I don't even know what it was. Okay. So there's my... Just so that you can see, there's my darkest pink that I started with. Here's this piece of lighter pink that I went to after that. So I'm going to add this piece of white to the paler pink to make it even lighter. And to be honest, you can't even really see it in this, that these two are different. You can see it more with the balls. Um, but if you add enough petals, that sort of light will become more obvious as time goes by. Sorry, someone's trying to text me. I need a, a I'm not home sign. Never mind. Okay. I'm not being very thorough about mixing it in right now. Also, again, because we're just, you know, you guys don't want to watch me mix colors. But you don't want to have it too motley. Just make sure you get a bit of mixture going on there. Yes. Roll it out. And you can see this is, we're getting quite big now. So you want to roll out quite a big piece to get all six out so you don't have to re-roll. Sorry, I've not got it out. There's a hair. There's a hair somewhere here. <laughs> and um, when you're working with this, this gum paste, 
make sure you wash your hands before you start because all this working with it, it quickly becomes kind of grubby gray, especially with white. And if you're finding you're getting a lot of bits of hair, check what you're wearing. Because sometimes if you've got like a fluffy jersey or something, you get these little hairs in it and it'll drive you to insanity. Um, I don't know. I can see there's some, I think it's one of my hairs there. All right, okay, so I'm just gonna grease this guy up slightly. You can see these are very well used. They've seen a, quite a bit of action. Okay, so we need six. Um, Cutting out like a lot of petals at a time. I would cut out as many of every size as you can while you've got it rolled out. I'm just doing them one by one. Um, but if you're making lots and then just get a piece of plastic or like a, you know, those plastic things that you use for paper, like to keep your file notes, whatever, and just lay it over your petals that you're not using. Then you can cut out lots and just leave them to, um, so they don't dry out, and then you can come back and work on them. Okay, so I'm sure you have the idea already. There's that pen. See ya. See you. Um, but here we go again with the veins in. Onto your paper pad. I definitely can't put six of these guys on this little guy. Going to a ball to whatever you're using. Pull those edges. Again, be generous with your frilling. Oh. I almost didn't run a class on this because I was like, well, wow, they're going to spend an hour watching me fill petals. <laughs> Turns out you are. <laughs> going to do an hour watching me fill petals. Okay, there we go. So again, exactly the same as we've just done it. And you will just keep doing this basically. So bottom third, bit of glue, frilly side out, good spacing, Kind of again, I would say more or less. Sorry, I'm just in the picture. More or less the same height if you were looking from the side. And off you go. And you just keep going. And these, I don't know. Actually, I haven't actually ever bought one. But if you buy them from from the baking shop pre-made, they're quite expensive. They're like, you know, if it comes with a leaf and a whatever and a bud like a hundred rand for a little spray. So it's definitely the kind of thing if you're doing it for money that it's worth mastering, I would say. Okay, so there he is. You can see it's starting to come together now. Peel them open a bit. Don't forget to put your, sorry, I forgot to do my overlapping properly. There we go. Yeah. So this guy here, I don't know if you, no, what have I done? Something's gone wrong here. This guy, see I'm done. There. Um, but again, if you didn't manage to get that overlapping perfectly, I don't think it would be obvious. I don't think you'd be able to see it. I think you'd have to look really closely to see that because of all the sprawls and things. Again, just peel them open. If you see somewhere where it's just not quite sticking, okay? Um, I've now pulled that off, but 
just make sure you, you know, I guess they don't go crazy with the glue. You don't want to make it, no, that's not glue, that's glue. You don't want to make it wet, just make sure that everything is nicely stuck on. Okay. I don't know if you can see it here, there. I obviously got some glue where, I don't know if it's visible, but um, it's a bit shiny. And that shiny mark will stay there. So you don't want to put glue, you don't want to be crazy with the glue. Use the glue sparingly. Okay. Open it out, on and on and on. Okay. I'm just going to do one more row. Can we face it? What time is it? No, it's 25 past. Let's move on to the other guy. Okay. So you would keep going like that until it is as big and as full as you want it. And also until the bottom of the ball is covered. So the very last row of petals will be down here like this, okay? You can also add individual wired petals, which is what I'm gonna do now. Um, I'm going to add those petals onto our other open one, but um, just so that you've got, you understand the options, okay. Right, so for the open one, I'm just going to use that same pink. I'm not going to mix any more with pink. You can either use a thing like this, or you can, if you don't have this thing, I'll show you your options. And again, where's this guy? We are doing, so each one is on its wire. You can see that. And this is the biggest petal. So I'm just going to use that big one now. Um, but you, if you wanted it to be not quite so big, you could maybe use the second biggest one, okay? And also, again, six or multiples of six, okay? Um, where's that thin wire? Okay. So I'm using these white wires because we don't want to see the wire shining through the paste. So if you had a green wire, you I think would Trying to see what these ones are made with. These ones are made with white. Well, maybe not all of them, even. I don't know if you can see. So there is the wire there. So if it's white, here's look on this broken one. Can you see it nicely? There. There's the white wire. So you can't see that it's there. Um, whereas the green wire, you might it might leave a little like colour peeping through. Okay. And I think those were made with white paste, actually. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So these you've got to do them one at a time and these are even more time consuming. So in some ways, even though this is more petals, I would rather make this variety than the open one. Um, okay, so if you don't have this thing, I'll show you this thing now. You just take your wire, so roll it out a little bit, take the wire and lay it in there. Fold this over to make like a little sandwich and then roll over it again. Okay. And again, you need to roll it quite thin, but obviously you can't roll it so thin that the wire, you can see my wire is starting to peep out there. Okay, then you're gonna cut it with the cutter. Here it is, just grease it up a little bit because they're so it's sticky still. Okay, and cut it out. Now, this point here, there is the end of the wire. So I would say if you go too far away from the wire, they're just very floppy. So just sort of, the, the wire would probably be three quarters or so up the length of the paper and cut it out. Obviously here at the bottom, the wire is coming out there. So it might not cut through perfectly. Okay. Which is fine, you're just gonna come and just use your fingers to smooth off those edges, especially if there's like a bit of roughness there. Okay, so that's option A. Option B is if you have this thing. So this thing is called a cell board. They are quite expensive. I actually don't know how much they are, um, but I think they're quite expensive. But also just shop around, you know, a lot of these places you can find them cheaper. Okay, but what it has is these grooves in it here, if you can see them. I'm going to use this guy here. So you roll out your paste over the groove. Okay. And you can see it's made this kind of imprint in there. Okay. Um, again. 
I'm just going to cut this away so you can see a bit better what I'm doing. And you do basically exactly the same thing again. You put the wire in the groove and fold it over like a little sandwich and then roll it out again. Okay. And what should happen is you can actually already see. So there the wire is peeping out. Here the wire is flush. It's inside that groove there. Okay. And then again, just cut it out. I actually don't know where the end of the wire is though. Let's just guess. But lined up, cut it out. Okay. And this is much easier to cut out now because you'll see the wire is in the groove, so you don't have to faff around with extra things. But for me, I certainly don't think it's a necessity to have a board like this. If you're making a lot of flowers, then great. But you know, if you're just making one or two, you don't need it. Just do it the other way. And then you can see it has this kind of stem, stem, vein. Okay, and then we're going to put the veins in it. I'm going to leave it on there. Here's the vein. This one is the one that I'm using. Okay. And then just press those veins in. Okay. And these will be very exposed. So make sure you do your veins nicely on these ones. If you don't have the cell board, just lay it flat. And then just be a bit more gentle. Maybe press the veins more on the sides. Because if you press too much in the middle, your wire is going to come out even more. Here we go. But for my money, I don't know. You can see the difference, but I don't think it's that. I don't know. It's neither here nor there for me. Whatever, use what you've got. Use what you've got. All right. On to the. And guess what? Here we go again. <laughs> me, rolling petals. Woo! <laughs> And again, you need to sh shape these quite a lot. These are the outermost petals, so they're the ones with the most frill on them. Okay. Right. I'm just going to do these two actually, because I want to show you the dusting. I'll do a few more when afterwards, and then I'll make a little video for you guys of how I join them. Okay. So there we go. And then these, before you can try and join these onto anything, they would need to be completely dry. But while they're drying, you can actually see it on this one. I don't know how, I don't know how you, if you can really see it. But these are quite flat, these ones. So if you look from the top, you get this weird kind of square look. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I would actually like them to be a little more shaped. So using a spoon or something like that, but even just this thing can work just to shape them a little bit more rounded. Okay, so there's my wire. There's the end of my wire there. I'm going to curve the wire a bit. So that already gives it a shape, you can see. But I actually want these, I want these sides to go up a little bit. Okay, so just putting them into a thing like that just to, just to help them shape a little bit. Okay, and then you would dry them overnight. Okay. I'm not going to leave them in there because my glue is next to it and I'm going to mess them up. But um, yeah, so there we go. Then that. And you can't bend the wire once the petal is dry because it's completely hard. So you need to make sure you shape it into the shape that you want now so that when it's dry, it is what you want it to be. Okay. Right. Then for the dusting. Okay. You know, let's just, just talk about let's just talk about the wiring before we carry on. Okay, so you could I'm just gonna bend this wire there so that it's standing out. You could add wired ones onto this big one. And that's certainly what I see with the ones that you buy from the shop. They have this kind of massive bud and then a few wired petals at the outside. You could do that if you want to. Or you can just keep building it until it's as big as you want it. Um, for this guy, 
same story like we did earlier. In fact, exactly the same. You take the tape and you bind it around to join them on. As I say, I'm not going to do it now because they're not that you're floppy. They're not going to be able to hold themselves up. They need to dry. Okay. But in terms of the dusting, okay, so this is where they really come to life. Um, let's go back to this guy. Um, I don't really know what, there's a lot of sparkle going on here. I've dusted yellow at the bottom and then this pink, which is very blotchy actually. <laughs> but you can either go, I don't know, I think mostly this, the outer tips are the palest. So I would go yellow, dark pink, getting paler. Um, that's not a very good example. Um, with these guys, I'm actually going to dust this one. So this is dry now, so it's much easier to dust than on a soft one. Okay. Uh oh, things are just breaking off. So I, I don't know, I think I said this the other day, I had this big box of flowers, just dried ones that I had made, uh, you know, and stuff. And then I dropped the box, so everything's a bit shattered, really. Um, but for the purposes of dusting, it's not really a problem. Um, there's the yellow. And for these dusts, okay, so I use, again, whatever. I don't have a preferred brand or anything like that. I just use whatever is going. Um, these are all Barco, which is, again, like a nice local South African brand. Um, this one is like a pearl dust, which gives it that glitter that you see on this one here. I don't know if you can really see it in the picture, but it's shimmery. I'm not feeling so shimmery today. I'm going to go just without shimmer. But you also get colors with the shimmer in them. So that's a pink with some shimmer in it. You can really see these things. Like a makeup kind of shimmer vibe to it. I'm just going to use my little pink. I mean, my pink, what, what is it? Cerise, that's not the right lid. Um, it's just a pink dust. Um, and then I've got some plain sort of yellow as well. Okay, so just, so just look at this bud here. I mean, this petal here, sorry. And if you want this yellow to really show up, then I would just start with a white petal. You can add the pink that's what was so if you look at the backs here these are just made with white paste and then the color was added after um i don't know if i don't have a darker yellow oh, there we go. I don't have to do one. so when you're dusting i don't know it does it's a little bit yellow but it's not really showing up maybe with a slightly darker yellow but also you don't necessarily want to turn the whole petal yellow just so just be gentle just a little there we go that's looking much better I don't know if you can see, but it's a little bit yellow. <laughs> you could even put a little bit of green right at the bottom there if you really have the energy for that. Today, I do not. And the pink, I'm just going to go from dark to light. So I'm using quite a bit on my brush. Start at the bottom and work out so that it gets paler as you go. Yeah. And again, I would do this once it was completely dry. I think that's going to be much easier. Okay, but you're getting, I'm getting quite a nice gradient, even though it's not dry. The same with this guy. So I would start with the darkest pink in the middle going lighter. Um, let me just show you on this wet one. So you can dust on it, but you can see it's, it's already sticking. You get, if there's a little bit of a glue blob, that's going to trap all the color on there. Rather wait till it's fully dry. So I'm going to see what I can do with this guy, this poor broken guy. I just want to just get a bit further away. Yeah. Okay. So again, quite a lot of brush, a color on my brush. Start in the middle and work your way out. And the more you kind of add, the darker the color will get. Sorry, I have this like a crazy dog now. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. My house is infested with animals, so I have a dog, but I also have a, a bird now. It's not my bird, it's a it's a wild bird. But it comes in and it like wants to like visit my sink every day, my kitchen sink. I do not know what that is all about. 
him. And then the very final step, once you've done all of this, is to um, steam it. So I think I'll, I'll make a separate little video, which I'll send to you when I send the link um, of steaming it, because I'm not, I'm not actually in my kitchen, I'm in my daughter's bedroom of all the places in the world. Um, but once you hold, so you just hold it over the steam of the kettle and that will take away this dusty look. So if you can see the color is there, but it's quite dusty. So we want it to be more kind of continuous and set in. Um, and I don't know if you can see, but now that I've started dusting it, okay, apart from the broken petals, it looks much more realistic. If you can see that. And you can see, I'm trying to see, sorry, focus. you can start to see where those little veins are. Okay, because the color will get trapped into those little veins and highlight them a bit. Okay. Um, this flower doesn't really have a calyx. So a calyx is this kind of green thing that you would have on the back here of a rose. Um, I, I, you could make a calyx, I suppose. I'm not really sure if people do that. I've never seen that. Um, but what you can do to give it that look is when you come to do the outside petals. So these ones, I mean, theoretically, it would have more petals here. You can see the bottom isn't finished on this one. Um, but if you go back to the outer petal, so let's say you now have an outer petal, you could come along and on the back here, just paint a little bit of green on the back to make that calyx or dust with a bit of green to make it look like a calyx. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I think that's just a big extra step and no one's looking at the back of your flowers anyway. As long as there's no, um, exposed ball or whatever i think that's absolutely fine okay so there we go um in terms of these petals so i would leave them to dry and then i would join them and then i would steam them because when they steam they get a little bit soft again so you want them kind of to be in their place that you're going to use them before you steam them um if you do steam them and you change your mind about the color, just wait for them to dry fully and then you can dust again. Obviously don't dust them while they still got moisture from the steam. Okay, um, time's it. Great. Does anyone have any questions? No. No. Uh, are we good? Nope. Yep. Nope. Um, I know I'm seeing some of you in a few minutes anyway, so we'll make some other flowers then. Um, yeah, and I will make um, a little video just showing you how to join these on tomorrow once they dry uh, and to steam, which I will send you the link to that and this video at the same time. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. Awesome. How does yours look, Jess? Show me your picture. Show me your flower. Ta da! That's beautiful! <laughs> cool. And cool. Um, as always, you're welcome to send me questions later if you think of them um, by email or WhatsApp. I'm usually better with WhatsApp, to be honest. Um, yeah. Cool. That's Thank you. I'm going to clean and then I'm going to see some of you guys at 11. Oh, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> okay, I'm hanging up now. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm hanging up. Okay, I'm just going to show you how to attach the petal. So there's the petal I made before, yeah, bent the wire. You don't really want to see all of the tape here, so I'm going to attach it nice and high. And just so I don't break the pencil, I'm going to start my tape on here just to make sure it's quite nice and secure on there. There we go. You can see as I pull on it, it gets that slightly like white look. That's how you know it's going to look inside the sticky. Go around once or twice. And then at an angle, I just twist. down so the ends of all of these wires are bundled together. So you don't have any red wires to 
and you would repeat that to three the pictures. So this is a wide screen out of the sky. Um, I'm just going to steam it so you can see the steaming. I think I'm going to make a super video for that. Okay, I'm going to steam this. Um, so what's making this camera shake is the kettle. So, let me just okay. so you can see that I've taken the lid off my kettle so that it can continue to steam and it won't switch off. I am going to switch off because it's making the whole thing shake. Okay, there we go. There's quite a good amount of steam coming out of it though. Okay, so here's my petal from yesterday. And I'm just going to hold it in that steam up here. Okay. And there you can see the difference. So here's the one, an unsteamed one. And there's the steamed one. That shininess will go away as, um, as it dries. That's just from from being in the moisture. Okay, so it sets those colors in, it looks much less dusty and much more alive. Okay, I'm gonna steam uh, the other things that we made. So this is this purple anemone. It had the plain dust here, the shiny dust there. Just be careful when you're steaming these, you don't wanna burn yourself. Um, and you can do it with all of your various things. This guy, he's just a little bit dusty as well. Could do with a little bit of steam. Done. Okay. Um, I just want to show you one other thing. I'm just going to put the kettle back on to get more steam going there. So this is this old one that I had that I've done previously that I dusted a little bit yesterday. So just have a good look at it there. So if you have something that's maybe not quite as fresh as it's looking as you would like it to be, the steam goes a long way. There you go. It's stretched it up quite a bit. Okay, uh, that's the story. I'm going to send this to you guys now.